It's one of the oldest events in American sports. 2,500 of the country's champion canines under one roof. It's like no other dog show I've ever been to. And to have your dog in it, it just doesn't get any better than that. It's the world famous Westminster Kennel Club Dog Show. Westminster is the king of shows. It is the pinnacle, it is the place. The Papillon, please. Papillon! Each year, the Pampered Pops compete for the ultimate honor, best in show. For those people who do show their dogs, it's the equivalent of the Oscars or the Nobel Prize. It is the honor. What makes humans spend six figures or more trying to make their dog America's top dog? Whether it's a Labradoodle, German Shepherd, Yorkshire Terrier, or Golden Retriever, everyone has a favorite dog. And every year, 2,500 of the nation's champion dogs gather in New York City to compete in the Westminster Dog Show. Just like Super Bowl fans, dog enthusiasts pack the stands or gather in front of televisions to root for the breed they love best. And many times, it's the breed that greets them at the door and provides faithful companionship. Welcome to American Originals. I'm Trish Regan. Throughout Westminster's history, it's been a sport for both the urban elite and the rural dog lover. It's the ultimate canine competition. And for those lucky few that win, there's nothing like being top dog. Best in show. It's a cold winter night in New York, but Madison Square Garden is hot with excitement as thousands of eyes focus on seven of the country's top dogs. Each one is special, the best dog in his breed. And they're so different, it seems impossible to choose just one winner. But that's just what the judge is about to do. May I have the beagle? Yes, the beagle! <laughs> this 15-inch beagle puppy has won best in show at the Westminster Dog Show, becoming the heavyweight champion of the canine world. We have never had a reaction like this in the garden. Standing ovation for the Beagle. Best in show. And when Don Jones pointed to Uno and said, give me the Beagle, I thought people were going to charge the floor like they would as if uh, somebody from the Knicks had hit the winning basket in the seventh game of the NBA playoffs. It was just so exciting. This 28-pound two-year-old seems to know exactly what's happening. That's your ultimate dream and your ultimate goal. So that it was, you know, definitely, you know, quote unquote, dream come true. Every February, millions from around the globe watch the two-day event on USA Network and online. Odds makers in Las Vegas get into the act too, but just for entertainment purposes. There's no real betting allowed. It's the premier dog event of the year, bringing dogs from all over the country to the Big Apple. Westminster is the total experience. It's not just the dog show. It's also the fact that it's here in New York City, in the media capital of the world, a few steps off the bright lights of Broadway. And New York City does its best to get into the act. With the lights on the Empire State Building in Westminster's purple and gold colors, letting the city know the dogs have come to town. Hotels in the Madison Square Garden neighborhood eagerly await the influx of dogs and their human owners and handlers every February. When Westminster comes into town, we accommodate approximately 2,000 participants and hosts and 1,000 dogs. Each year, the Hotel Pennsylvania builds an indoor puppy spa and workout area to ensure they're one of the top destinations for Westminster's contenders. We're extending an open paw to them. Being in New York, bringing such a prestigious event, it's good for everyone. It's good for local businesses, for local restaurants, for stores. So it's just another great thing about the city to have Westminster here. It takes hundreds of people and more than a year of preparation to make sure Westminster goes off without a hitch. 
The judges for each year's show are chosen two years in advance. I don't know how good they really are at keeping it a secret. Everybody's so proud to do this assignment that uh, they get it leaked a little bit. And uh, he tells his wife, and then his wife tells her cousin, and then her cousin tells somebody a dog show, and it gets around pretty quickly. And the dogs are hard at work to make sure they qualify for the biggest show of the year. They can go to shows virtually every weekend of the year. In many locations can go to shows, three and four or five shows in a row. It's a horrendous schedule. A select number of vendors have booths in the area backstage at Madison Square Garden, selling everything from food to dog-inspired jewelry and pet supplies. A spectator who comes there to see the dogs can also do a little shopping on the side and make a full adventure out of it. You can certainly move a lot of product in a short period of time because of the concentration of buyers at a place like Westminster. But equally important is the brand awareness and showing your product. And if you have a new product to launch, there are very few places you can do it with that sort of level of attention and information that you can achieve at Westminster. Affiliation with America's Dog Show is certainly lucrative. And its reach is far beyond those who make it to the show at the Garden. We know through the years that our ad sales have continued to grow. We're not just about dog food and pet care products. We're about any product that people are, are interested in, whether it's cars or food or whatever. We are the American public watching this dog show and participating in this dog show, and our advertisers come to us with that in mind. After winning Best in Show, Uno's life quickly shifts into high gear. We're going to go to Sardi's for the Dog Fancers Luncheon, where they serve him sliced steak on a silver platter. From the media tour the next morning to being featured on the Today Show, and then on to visits with military heroes at Walter Reed Hospital and familiar friends, Uno continues to be a crowd favorite. For the first time ever, the Best in Show Dog at Westminster visited the White House and met the President. And then Uno was part of a presentation in the East Room with Mrs. Bush. The popularity of the Beagle skyrockets after Uno's big win. It's the Westminster effect. Every year, whatever breed wins at Westminster, the phone starts ringing the next day in that club. Everybody thinks now, they, the dog looked great on television, I gotta have one. Everyone's even jokes, it's the most talked about Beagle since Snoopy. Uno's kind of very popular and kind of set, set off Beagle mania is what they've even said. Part of Uno's unique appeal is that he's the first Beagle to ever win Westminster. No dog has ever been in demand more than Uno has. It's the first time a very commonly owned dog like a Beagle has won. People want him. Long ranked near the top of dog popularity polls and the model for one of the most famous cartoon characters in the world. Some said the Beagle was a little too ordinary to win Westminster. He was one of the most exciting dogs that I'd seen for that age in, in probably decades. I think what's really contributed to Uno's success is not only is he physically, confirmationally, a really outstanding representative of the breed, but he also has that extra um, sparkle, that extra bit of charisma. Uno is probably the most nearly perfect dog I've ever judged. I'm sure he is. Coming up on American Originals, with 2,500 champion dogs from 170 breeds, just how do they decide who is best in show? And later on American Originals, Best in Show makes it to Hollywood. Twenty-five hundred of the country's champion canines under one roof. That's what Madison Square Garden looks like every February when the Westminster Dog Show comes to town. The dogs spend most of their time at Westminster in what's known as the benching area. The dogs have to stay on the benching setup backstage whenever they're not in the ring. The benching area is the heart and soul of our dog show. It's where everybody gets ready, where they're uh, having this great camaraderie with their colleagues and their peers and their fellow competitors, but it's also a way for the spectators to get involved. One of the fun parts about Westminster is, is the benching aspect, 
where you go see the players before and after the game, which is the equivalent of being able to stand on the sideline or go into the locker room of a Super Bowl team. It's extraordinary the access that people can get. That's part of what makes it fun. Spectators can go up to their favorite breeds. Sometimes they can even pet them. But a fun afternoon out for the fans can be a nerve-wracking time for the owners, handlers competing at America's Dog Show. I think a lot of people are nervous backstage. I mean, you're going in there, it's an exciting venue. The electricity in the building is awesome. It's off the charts. And so some people don't know how to kind of hone it down and keep them their own composure. 12, 14, 15. The two-day schedule can be grueling. We take the Monday dogs over there about 5 a.m. in the morning, take them on a little dolly, cart them over in the building, get in line, wait for our, our assigned spots, and uh, go set up. When you go into Madison Square Garden, the crowds are unreal. And you have to have a dog that can really deal with that. The rings aren't particularly big. You're on carpet. You have crowds of people, you know, 10 deep around the rings. I and mean, you can sometimes barely get to the ring. The dogs and handlers remain at the garden all day, preparing for their moment in the spotlight. You start trying to go on the ring and you're ready to go. You're on your toes, you jump in that ring and put on a show. For dog owners, reaching Westminster is the culmination of a very costly year. This is an expensive sport and there really is little financial reward. <laughs> Traveling to dog shows every weekend of the year, paying for the right grooming, the right handler, it all adds up. It's hard to put an actual dollar figure on everything because there's so much that goes into it. From my perspective uh, as a handler, it can range from, say, 5000 a month. Those are just in what I would be paid. Going to a dog show involves travel. You gotta pay for some expenses on the road, whether it's a hotel or lodging or food, board for your dog, grooming for your dog, training for your dog. Dog owners who believe their dogs have what it takes to become one of the top canines in the country may decide to campaign their dog. Campaigning includes advertising in specialty magazines to ensure the dog remains on people's minds. It's letting other judges know, it's letting other handlers know, it's letting other owners know and other breeders know. Advertising can be very expensive. Front pages can run anywhere from $3,000 to $10,000. And that's for one issue for one month. It's easy to rack up a huge bill. When you campaign a dog, you have to go in with your eyes open knowing that it's gonna cost mid to upper six figures and in some cases, much higher than that with advertising and so forth. If you stop to think about the money, you probably wouldn't do it. With a potentially huge investment and little financial reward, why show dogs? Why do they play golf? Why do they drive race cars? Why do they do all of these things? It's the pleasure of owning a dog that wins. This is an affair of the heart. This is a passion that people have for their dogs. For those who win Best in Show, the thrill of owning the nation's top dog more than makes up for the financial cost. For winning Westminster, there is no big money. There's a heck of a lot of prestige, a lot of moments that you can't put a money value on. I can tell you from experience that after you won Westminster, like the moment that the judge points to you, it's a feeling like I, I can't even describe. It's just an elation and a, a, a thrill that you cannot put into words. Judging the nation's top dogs is both an art and a science. They know the intricacies of these breeds by heart. All right here, you don't have a card or numbers to go by. It's your evaluation based upon your knowledge, experience of the dogs. No scorecards, nothing written down. You just pick the dog on the basis of your brain doing it. Although it may look like the dogs are competing against each other, 
They're actually competing to see which one is the most perfect specimen of their individual breed. You examine it, you send it down and back so you can see the soundness in its movement going that way. You gauge its presence, presentation. Then you look at the dog standing. Then, after closely examining each dog, the judge makes his or her decision. At the moment that the judge selects the best in show winner, the excitement and the relief the handler is feeling is just electric. Dr. Jones chose the dog he believed was closest to puppy perfection when he chose Uno as best in show in 2008. I was very sure of myself when I made that decision. I was very comfortable with that decision. And it was a great opportunity to judge the greatest dogs in the country. The handlers are the ones under the most direct pressure, making sure the dog has slept, exercised, eaten well, and is in a good mood when the moment under the spotlight comes. This is Wishbone. Wishbone won the breed here last year. <laughs> Puts the brakes on. <laughs> It can be very stressful to show a dog at that level because you put a lot of pressure on yourself to want to win. I just treat it as another dog show because it, the minute you're acting differently because it's Westminster, that feeling is going to go down through the end of your lead and your dog's going to feel it. It can be very stressful, but it also can be very rewarding because they're like everybody else. They're having their moment in the sun on national TV in front of millions of people. <laughs> It takes more than physical perfection and a dazzling personality for a dog to win Westminster. It takes that indescribable moment in the ring that becomes canine destiny. Coming up on American Originals, the big business of American pets. The sky's the limit. There's almost no limit to what you could actually spend on your dog. And why it's a $43 billion industry. It happens once a year, a moment when the rock stars and athletes that normally inhabit New York's Madison Square Garden step aside for their four-legged friends. It's time for the Westminster Kennel Club Dog Show. 3.4 million people will watch on TV's USA Network as one of these dogs is crowned the winner, best in show. Some of the viewers are the most casual of dog fans. All right. I think what it comes down to is three different reasons that they're watching. Number one is for the competition. They want to see who is the greatest dog, who's going to win. It's like winning the Super Bowl. The second reason they watch is for the entertainment, you know, 170 different breeds and varieties. You're not going to see all those dogs walking down the street and going to the park every Saturday morning. But the third reason that people watch, that I believe is the ultimate reason, is what I call the alma mater factor. You're sitting at home with your Brittany watching Westminster. You want to see the Brittany. You're going to root for the Brittany. It's just a lot of fun. And knowing that the Knicks play in the same arena as the, as the dogs do, you know, it's, it's, it's been a lot more fun to watch the dogs the last few years than to watch the Knicks. There's no doubt that Americans love Westminster because they love their dogs. From early American images of man's best friend, dogs have held a special place in American homes and families. A dog is waiting for you when you come home, tail wagging. You could tell him the woes of the day, and he's just sitting there waiting to lick your face and go out and play. This affection translates into big money for the multi-billion dollar pet industry. Americans spend $43 billion a year on their pets. And to put that in perspective, that's more than they spend on going to the movies, listening to music, and playing video games combined. There are 74 million dogs in the U.S. today, and nearly 39% of households have at least one. While the freshwater fish remains the most popular pet in the U.S., dogs hold a special place in the American heart. Our dogs teach us the one great thing, unconditional love. And I think that's what the relationship is all about. Today's dogs have access to luxuries another generation could only have dreamed of. 
Companies that used to make products only for humans are now supplying everything from doggy mouthwash to toys and gourmet treats. In the same way that designer clothes have moved younger into toddlers and children, they've also moved into new product areas like dogs and cats. We're tending to reward the pets in human terms. It's no longer good enough to reward your pet in pet terms. So now it's the you know special foods, the special treats, the special toys, because then we feel better that we've taken good care of our pet. The latest trends are everything is organic, green. There's a real made in America movement with the scare last year we had with Chinese dog edible products, food and treats. There's a nearly endless array of luxury foods for your puppy. Foods enhanced with glucosamine for doggy arthritis, something for every need and every appetite. Just as people are more aware of what they put in their own bodies, they're much more aware of what they put in their dog's body, so people are absolutely willing to pay. There are puppy spas and puppy gyms, stylish jackets for cold weather outings and Halloween costumes for the well-dressed pooch. The majority of our clientele is definitely a well-established New York career woman with great personal style. And there's no way that taking that sort of effort with her own grooming and her own dress that she wants to appear in public with a dog that has anything less than a perfect collar, a perfect coat, a perfect haircut, because it, it just detracts from everything else that's going on in her life. A recent innovation in pet services is health insurance for America's 382 million pets. The reason pet health insurance has really taken off is that the medical expenses for pets have gone up astronomically. You get expensive surgery, you get oncology units devoted to dogs, you have MRI equipment for dogs. This is very expensive. It's on par with what people spend on themselves. And companies are capitalizing on what they see as a growth industry. By one estimate, there were 520,000 pet health insurance policies at the end of 2006, with premiums of $163 million. It's become one of the largest retail sectors in the country. Of the $43 billion, if that were a single retail segment, according to the U.S. Census Bureau, that would actually be the eighth largest retail segment in the country. It would be bigger than toys, bigger than candy, bigger than jewelry, bigger even than hardware. That economy just keeps getting bigger and bigger, and most people I speak to don't think it's going to stop because the type of people who are buying pets now, by and large, have more disposable income, and the attitude toward pets has just changed to the extent where once you humanize an animal like a dog, that comes with responsibilities where you then have to treat it like a little child. Even with the economic downturn, sales in pet items have remained stable. Because people seem to be nesting more, staying home, and focus more on the dog. So thankfully it hasn't begun to affect us yet. The main thing to look at is the trend. Look at the, the trend in spending of pets and the sort of double-digit increases you're seeing in what people spend and compare that to the other areas of their life, you'll see that the pet spending, by and large, is going up faster than most other expenses. In this booming pet economy, affiliation with an exclusive event like Westminster can be very good for